hello hello welcome back and i suppose before anything else i should say happy new year's eve i hope you're all going to set yourselves in for a nice relaxing evening and welcome in 2021 hopefully it won't arrive quite the same way as 2020 did anyway i'm claire this is purple poppy and today I'm working with folders. So I thought I'd bring you along to join in. So <clears throat> I was flipping around on YouTube and I was watching videos by Susie at Shabby Soul, who I think is awesome, and also Oak House Journals. Another lovely lady. Such a delicate voice. And I was totally inspired by the folio that they had done. Um, obviously, Susie at Shabby Soul, hers was very Tim Holtz inspired. I believe she's a design team member for him. And Oak House was just very lacy and very opulent. And they were both beautiful in their own way, and I loved them. And they got me thinking about folios and um you know the way that we can store things etc so the first thing i did was i took a file folder one of the standard Malia file folders um the type that we have a problem finding here in the uk and i basically whilst it was folded i just let's get rid of all this so it's easier to see i literally cut it into four like that and i trimmed off the um tab keep that for later and using my envelope punch board i just created my own tabs and i deliberately did two at the top and two at the bottom and my plan here was that I would turn that one upside down. So I've got a bottom and a top. And I would do the same with that one. And then I would sink. And then they look like the complete file folder again, you see, doing it that way. And I thought, do you know what? This would be a nice way of making a very quick and easy journal. Because what you could do is you could take a piece of A4 paper put them up there for a minute you can simply fold it in half this way like so you can fold it in half again like so and then if you cut along this middle line here so you've got two exactly the same size pieces you will get eight journal pages and then you could just pop them in there now i like them oversized but you could trim them down if you wanted to i was thinking i could then do another one i could then add in i did have another one another sheet that's been cut into four and then another one and so on and so forth and very quickly you're going to get look quite a nice full up diary and a uh, diary journal and whilst these two hardly constitute a journal or a signature within a journal you have actually got a nice card front to each semi section so i thought that was quite a nice idea so that was the first thing i played with then i looked at the uh, folders or the folios like the two ladies had done and I worked out that from a single 12 by 12 piece of card you could create this and so as you can see it's let's get my ruler it's 12 well it's slightly under now but it was 12 by 12 and I have gone in three inches 
and I scored from top to bottom. And then on the other side, I went in four inches and I scored from top to bottom. I then turned it around and I went in two inches and I scored from top to bottom. And then on that side, one inch top to bottom. And what that did was it left me with these two squares almost and two long thin rectangles and I trimmed them out in fact here they are look there's that bit and there's one of them I don't know oh there's the other thin one there you go just like that and then from this one I cut three one inch circles and what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick these three one inch circles together and then I'm going to put a brad or, um, oh goodness me, I can't think what it's called, the rings. But anyway, I'm going to put through there, I've marked the centre, I will pin it there and then we can put a string round there to keep it shut. Simple, 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 okay? And then what I thought was, because obviously I've got these areas, now if you use it this way, as it appears most people do, which is where I automatically wrote that way round, I feel you're potentially going to have a problem with your papers. Because I think, and I bet I haven't got one, but if you've got an A4 designer paper, let's pull this pad out for a minute just to show you what I mean. So this is, give or take, an A4 sheet, yeah? I think if you use this, you are going to need to mat or to cut and seam and you've got to make sure that you haven't got a directional pattern whereas i think if i turn it this way and use it more like an envelope it's going to be much easier to cover it so i am going to work this way obviously you must work whichever way you feel so what i intend to do is as you can see i'm going to put some wallet pockets along there to tuck in some ephemera I'm going to put an inner pocket on here tuck in some more ephemera this will be flap number two which I will probably put an envelope or something on this will be flap number one which I will extend in some way I haven't fully decided yet and then across here I will probably have a pocket or maybe two pockets which I can put lots and lots of ephemera things in I may choose to put a small journal through that spine there. And I created that spine area on all of them to allow for the building up. And all I did was where I used my scoreboard and I scored from top to bottom. So if, for example, I scored on two, and that's what got me that line there. I then scored that line, which is the next one over, and then that one, the next line over, on each side. So I had three lines, and those three lines will allow me some depth, okay, for the stuff we're going to put in. So that was what I did with that idea, which I'll come back to in a minute. And then I thought, everybody always does these folios like a book. How novel would it be to do an envelope folio? So I got my envelope punch ball down. And again, two pieces of 12 by 12. So it would have gone like that, wouldn't it? That would have been my 12 by 12. And my punch board said that the largest envelope I could do would be 11 and a half by 11 and a half card. So I took half an inch off the top and half an inch off the side and I then put it through my scoreboard and created the envelope shape. I then again went back to my 
scoreboard so this was the envelope punch board to get that and then i went back to my scoreboard and where that score line was i went over two and i did one single to give me that boxing the depth for the envelope and then i measured the inside area or shall we say the complete area and i cut a piece of card with an extra inch on it and did the depth score again just to give me a hinge for this to fold up okay and i've also got a pocket here and a pocket here i've done pretty shaping on the side there i'm planning to put a pocket here of some sort and a pocket here of some sort and i think i'm either going to put a little strip there and maybe a small pocket there and I'm going to do something on the sides to create the same kind of folio but just in an envelope format rather than this book type format that everybody seems to use it's nice to be different so if you want to craft along with me I will carry on with these projects over the next few days but for now, I'm going to work on this, let's call it the yellow one. And I'm just going to readdress that for you to cover every step in case you missed it. So I have here, because obviously this also was plain card, which meant I would have covered it. But if you use a nice designer paper, especially one that's double sided, you are not going to need to cover it. So what I did was i've got my scoreboard let's open him up i plopped my 12 by 12 in okay i'm going to put my paper guard up because at the moment i'm not well, actually i'm not going to cut at all on my board with this one so line that up get my score tool okay and i'm coming three inches and then eight inches okay and then I am gonna turn it round and I am gonna go one inch and then from the other end I'm gonna do two and a half inches so 12 to 11 is one to 10 is two to nine and a half is two and a half and I'm just going to bring that down there like that. See? Simple. So then having done that, I'm going to find a pair of scissors. And if I turn it over, we're going to take out this small rectangle here, this small rectangle here, this square, and this rectangle stroke square. Okay? So I'm going to cut up that line just to the score line we don't want to go over the score line and then I'm going to cut that one like that and exactly the same on this side I've actually got a little bit skew with there I need to straighten that up. Just like that. And this one. And then this one. And then I simply took my corner rounder and I rounded off every corner. Okay, so as I've got my punch ball to hand, I'm going to use this one. So literally in, round the corner off. And I did that to every single corner just because a i believe it looks nicer than a square one 
and B, if you're sliding things over, especially for the flats, it does actually make it easier when it's round than when it's square. So there you go, it takes two minutes. And then obviously this one will come in, this one will come in, and then this one, and this one. So there you go. Just, whoops, get a bone folder if need be. It gives that extra press on those lines. This particular paper is that handmade paper pad that I got from Hobbycraft. It was a little while ago now. I don't know if they're still in stock. We've got a little bit of a... I'm just going to trim this one a little tiny bit because we've got a little bit of ruck on the fold, which obviously we don't want. A little tiny bit. <clears throat> there you go, that's better. And then this one. Okay. So just like that, that's what we did. Okay. And then I took the large one and I took my inch circle punch and I just literally went one two this is much thicker card we might only need two of these and three okay then let's glue these together first of all So just put some prick stick on there. Make sure you get a nice pattern on one side, especially if your paper is one-sided. Slide them all in. Double check they're all level. Just like that, okay? And then folding it all in, the deep one is my fold up, the narrow one is my fold down. Okay, I'm just going to get my ruler. We know, let's get a pencil, that this is eight and a half. So we want 4.25. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to butt my ruler up to that flap. It gives me the area of where I want and I want 425 so that's just there okay and then I'm going to move it up about a centimeter to there okay and then with my hole punch she says with my hole punch I'm gonna find the center of my now three layer disc. Check on the side to make sure you're in the center and punch and spin and put it out, okay? If you haven't got a narrow one like that for a brad and you want to use a grommet, there you go, got the word, a grommet then you may want to use a bigger hole punch and I'm going to use my grommet squasher just going to put that in there there you go and I've created that hole okay because it's quite thick so right, I'm looking for my pokey tool, which of course I can't find. So I'm just going to use my pencil. I'm just going to push through there, make sure that's all pushed through. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to line it up 
so that I can see my dot in the middle. And go like that. Okay. Now, if like me, you don't have a very long punch, if you've got something like crocodile, it will be fine. Then I suggest you use your all. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find my all. Gonna, and I'm just going to stab through on a book to make sure I don't stab my fingers. And I'm just going to go right the way down till the hole is the same size as the circle that I drew, i.e. by going up the width of the awl. Okay? So having done that, I can now pull out a grommet. And I'm going to push the grommet through the hole in the disc. Always a little bit tight, but I like it that way because it makes sure that it sits in there square, she says. There you go. In there. And then we need to put it I thought three was going to be a bit thick this probably would have been better with this very thick paper just using two that hole slightly bigger and pushing that through and then obviously close up your grommet and then that way I haven't done it obviously because I need to stand up and put some pressure on it but that now sits there and that will hold our lace that will keep it shut so there you go, if you want to craft along, um, you can get started with the base frame in the way that I've showed you. So it's your big flat, sorry, flat one, flat two, that's your bottom, that's your top, and there is your grommet closure. Okay, so you can get yourself to that stage and join in the fun of decorating and filling it up as we go along so as always thank you for joining me have fun crafting stay safe i'll see you soon bye for now